Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Voice in the Hollow. I'm Miguel Ortega and this is my co-host Tran Ma. Hey. <laughs> and uh, we're doing a weekly um, vlog showing the process of making this short film, this animated uh, Swahili African horror film uh, done entirely in Unreal 5. Um, so yeah. That's it. Uh, every week we show where we're at. So this is not like pre-planned uh, lectures. It's just the reality of uh, the process, right? It's uh, yes. It's grueling and it's slow. So uh, and that's how that's how it is. That's kids. how it is. Yeah. In real life. So yeah. So um, well, right now we're, we've been working uh, primarily on this one sequence which is uh, a ceremony sequence. It's where a girl, um, one of our characters called Ala, gets initiated into the tribe, the, the hunters, the, the pack of hunters in the tribe. And her sister is very jealous of it because she's not very good at uh, hunting. Uh, so there's still a few scenes missing here. So if you can see, if you look at my timeline here, uh, there's like a gap here. The gap is, should actually be a, a little bit bigger than that, but that represents like some of the shots that are missing. Um, so yeah, so we'll fill that in, but I'll show you like what we have so far. Uh, let's see. Oh, the sound is not playing there. Oh, I have the mute button turned on. So that's that part. We're missing a few shots in between. And then when she storms out, we're working on this right now. Excuse me, she doesn't have clothing at the moment. So uh, you're seeing some CG thingies there. Um, we're gonna pop them in right now. Um, the clothing is simulated separately, so uh, we're always waiting for, for that to come in and we already have two of them. So we're going to populate this one and this one you could see doesn't have it. So this week we worked a lot on uh, the priest here. So you can see he's all simmed now. Uh, looks freaking cool as hell. Uh, I still haven't fixed this fire issue. I, I think it's an exposure issue. I just, uh, I know I'll resolve that later, but uh, I'll get to it. Time comes, but yeah, this priest. I just love how he he turned out. Um, he was a bit of a problem because of all the layers of fabric he has. It's, it's multiple layers of simulations, plus the mask um, is actually interacting with the fabric, and the the body being like a separate piece. So there's multiple objects interacting with the the clothing. You can see the clothing is simming off of. Um, the mask itself. So uh, quite a pain in the butt. So let's start putting the fabric in on these over here. So um, let's do this one first. So you can see she has nothing there. Another thing you might not notice it here, but if you pay attention to her butt, yeah, you don't see it there, but her butt like flattens out completely. Like the rig there, you can see it right there. Oh, yeah, that was fun to fix. So all of that stuff has to get fixed in shot modeling, which we're using uh, Mush 3D. Yeah. Well, yeah, it has to be fixed, even if there's clothing. Like, she has a skirt, uh, because without the butt, like, the skirt falls off. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so let's see some of the comments here. I want to be a game developer. Uh, that's cool. You should be a game developer. Uh, let's see what we have. Hello. Hello. Oh, look who we have, David Quack, good friend. Uh, thanks, man. Um, 
pyramid scheme scheme are these closed sims in UE5? No, nothing is simulated in UE5. All of that is done in Marvelous Designer. Uh, Mystery Girl 14. Hi, I'm new here. Is this made by you two or is there a bigger team working? It's primarily us two. What we have, um, we have a rigger, so that's doing all the character rigging. And lately we've brought in uh, two guys that are helping us with uh, animation, like primarily like doing cleanup on the motion capture. And that's Christian and uh, Joey Park. So they're helping us with some of this. Uh, Joey Park helped us with the cleanup of this priest. Um, but yeah, that's it. It's a very tiny team. Even that is pretty small. Um, it's super, super small. Yeah. So uh, in terms of building the assets and lighting and everything, it's just us two. So we're only getting help on the rigging and animation side. Everything else, it's just us two. So, um, and again, a lot of the animation is uh, motion captured. Uh, all the facial, all the facial performances are, are me. So whenever uh, you see these funny expressions or whatever, it's uh, it's Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> it's me bringing out my inner teenage girl. Yeah. So all of this stuff here. That's that's all me. Uh, <laughs> Those are all uh, literally Miguel's acting performance. Yeah. Hello, you guys are really progressing really fast. Besides James Journey's book, do you have any recommendations of books regarding light and color? Uh, honestly, for light and color, I don't know about color, but for lighting, I would just watch The Godfather on a loop, and that's everything you need to know. Uh, <laughs> that's my favorite movie, and basically everything... Uh, I just try to copy that. So yeah. All right. So let's get some of the clothing uh, on her here and fix the flat butt. So let's just open up Unreal. And you can see here we have uh, our scene. So if I start navigating around here, you'll see um, how massive the set is. Like you could literally put the camera in any angle, and there'll be something there. Um, it's actually kind of hard to navigate because it's so big that um, you bump into something. So you see, like, you have the corridors here. It just keeps on going and going and going. So it's pretty nuts. So, all right, so let's get this, uh, let's get this clothing in, in there. Um, so what I'll usually do, I keep everything pretty well organized. So depending on the shot, so you can see ceremony sequence, alembic uh, inputs or imports. And this shot, I'm just calling it meal for obvious reasons. Um, so let's just take a look here. So I already have her in place. So what I'll probably do is I'm just going to go to re-import with new file. And I'll go to my Alembics right there. And you can see here I have two files. Um, this is Tran is doing the Sims. So she'll hand me that. Um, the settings here, very important. Merge meshes, yes, or else you'll have an Alembic uh, file for every single thing here, including like the eyes, the teeth, and everything, and it'll just get like unwieldy. Uh, so merge meshes, bake uh, animation, no compression, import type skeletal, skip empty frames, this thing here. Holy crap, is this important. Make sure you have that turned on or else um, you'll just crap out. Uh, Rotation, 90 degrees. This, again, very important because um, if not, your model will be rotated. This is one of the most annoying things for me in all of Unreal is how OBJs, FBX, uh, and Alembics all have different rotation settings that you have to set. I wish there was a preset, and maybe there is, and I don't know it yet, where you could just 
set that. Like, this is what I want for my OBJs, for my FBX, for my Alembics. Don't ask me anymore, please, because it's so annoying. And you, if you forget, it's just such a pain in the butt, especially when you're dealing with Alembic files that are pretty massive and take a while to come in. If you do it wrong for whatever reason, you're like, oh, crap, I have to re-import it again. And it takes a few minutes. So I'm going to turn on find materials so that it uh, loads up the materials. And let's just uh, let that uh, come in. It's going to replace the current Alembic file that's there with um, the new one that Tran gave me, which would have the fixed butt. It's not going to have the clothing, so we'll have to bring in the clothing uh, separately. So, uh, David Quack, did you find that the face cap was doing a good job capturing the subtle nuances of the face acting? Uh, well, let's take a look at it. I'll show you a few, a few things here. So, while that's loading up, so here's a, a small little section here. You can tell me what you think. So it's doing a pretty pretty good job yeah. of the face stuff, actually. Um, Especially for the style that we've chosen. Like, yeah. uh, you know, maybe, well, if we had gone photo real, we wouldn't need to have done. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the big thing. If we'd have gone with photo real, we probably would be like, oh, this is not enough. But we're going with a very stylized look in particular because there's only two of us. And because we have a limited amount of time to get this done, we're we're not, we're trying to not bite off more than we can chew. We could obviously model something much more realistic than this, like something much more realistic than this, but we're choosing to kind of uh, step back a little bit. You can see the face stuff here. So this is like not a big performance, but you can still see a lot of emotion on the face, as subtle as as it is. show you another one here uh, so if we go over to this here when she gets upset like even here when she's running uh, it's capturing all the stuff on the face like even when you can see when she uh, has her mouth closed and everything, she still looks really uh, upset. So all of that stuff was in the, in the facial performance because I'm a master actor, <laughs> uh, not really. But it did a good job. And I think the great thing about this stuff is like the worse you act, the better in a way because I'm obviously overacting everything to try to get that stuff to, to uh, come through. Yeah, it's not like real live action where you don't, you want the subtlety, but not in this. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I haven't watched it. Oh, thanks, David. Uh, uh, when will this be released? Hopefully very soon. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that it took a long time to ramp up, but now things should be moving faster. I think our bottleneck right now is... Um, Uh, the bottleneck right now is the animation cleanup. Uh, uh, which format do you import your animated models into Marvelous? OBJ. Uh, what are you bringing it in? It's all Alembic. Alembic yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alembic, Alembics are so universal now. Yeah. Veronic, this looks so good. Oh, thank you so much. So, all right. So let's see if uh, that went in already. So... Yes, you can see the butt is now fixed. So now let's get the clothing in there. So it's the same thing. One thing I always do um, is I'm just constantly saving. 
Uh, the weird thing is whenever I'm saving and I'm not doing the stream, it saves pretty quickly. The moment I'm streaming, it takes like a minute to save, which is really annoying because uh, there's much more interesting things to see than someone saving. Um, okay, so there it goes. So let's hide all the lights for now. You can see we're using a zillion lights, by the way. Um, so let's get the clothing in there. So let me just select Ala. I'll go into her folder and let's import uh, the clothing. So Alembic, uh, Ceremony 2, Neil Hero, and there it is. So I'll keep the same settings. Um, let's bring that in. So the clothing, if you guys are tuning in for the first time, does have some uh, issues. Sometimes if the clothing is too far from the origin, you have to adjust your your bound settings. Uh, that was a, a tough one to figure out because um, when I originally started doing this, I was bringing in the clothing and as I would zoom away from the character, the clothing would pop up. But whenever I was close to, to it like this, the clothing appeared to not be there. So I thought I was doing something wrong and it wasn't until I like zoomed out that I saw it pop in. So I'm like, okay, there's some sort of a, a display issue. And it was just uh, the setting called your bounds, which we'll see, it, it might happen here. So you can see the clothing is now a separate Alembic file. I'll drag it in there, zero out um, the settings here. I'm gonna drag it into my sequencer, go to my first frame, and then attach the animation clip. Okay. Uh, since it's an Alembic file, it doesn't always necessarily line up perfectly because I can shift the timing here. So I just have to make sure that the timing matches the timing of the character. And I have moved the character, so I need to make sure that I set the same um, translations to um, the clothing. So let's take a look and see what is going on. Oh, so I think I copied the wrong thing. So, um, yeah, I did. So I'll paste that in there. And let's take a look at that. Just uh, getting the timing to line up with each other. There we go. And I should be seeing the clothing and I'm not seeing it. So this might be the bounds issue. So this is what I have to do. I'll just come over here, go to bounds. One thousand, let's do 10,000. 10,000, probably much more than I need, but. And I'm still not seeing the clothing. So uh, let's see what's going on here. So that's that. There it is. That's weird. Okay. Uh, so just uh, like always, it's it's a uh, Olympic user error. Well, Olympic pops around too, like when you do one thing, and then it just like disappears in the frame. No, but that was just that was just my. Uh, 
I was probably pasting the attributes of the clothing from the priest. Ah. But uh, you can see, um, let's, let's go back to just single view. You can see that though, this is something that I really like, like, well, I, I'm not gonna be able to do it now, but how sometimes it just randomly goes to a different location when I don't have my, my uh, cinematic view uh, active. And sometimes we'll find cool camera angles that way that we didn't even intend to, uh, to find. We're like, damn, that's a pretty cool angle. That's what I love about Unreal is that you could get these happy accidents. You could like walk around the set and be like, ooh, that's great, ooh, that's cool, let's try to do that, so. Um, okay, so what is going on here? So she is, this is like her bar mitzvah, her uh, vision quest thing, her uh, sweet 16, but it's not based on age, it's based on the fact that she has uh, proven herself to be uh, an awesome hunter, hence why in the, in the beginning of the film, we have her killing this cute little thing here, um, which is our anteater. You can see the anteater looks like a, a teddy bear on purpose. We were trying to go with this weird uh, aesthetic. And by the <laughs> way, that's that's completely simulated in Marvelous Designer as well. Oh, that one took a very long time. Yeah. It so, was very, very difficult. Yeah. So all of this is uh, the model. And, and then on, on top of it, you have uh, clothing simmed uh, for the little spikes and for the skin itself. So it's hard to see. But it's uh, it's definitely all fabric. You can see that how the wrinkles bunch up and stuff. We're still doing some tweaks on the fingers, and I want to have some rocks moving and whatever. What's really cool, though, I keep saying this on all the streams, but I just love how you see the reflection in the water at like zero cost. You know, just oh, that's kind of cool. So, uh, but anyway, so um, let's go back to this. So there we go. We have clothing on her. No more booty in the air. So let's save this. Let's go to our other shot and start putting the clothing in the other shots. So next one is storm off. So these are all my shots. Someone was asking me at Noman the other day if I edit my, my stuff in sequencer. I do not edit in sequencer. I think, to be honest, that that's kind of barbaric to like lay out your shots sequentially in here. Not I just, just, that's just that, but like it's heavy. Um, yeah. Just having Unreal open and then trying to do other stuff and having an entire map with lighting. <laughs> yeah. It's well, crazy. Well, I don't do it that way at all. I I, I do it definitely have everything uh, one shot, one sequence, render it out, and everything is done in Premiere. Uh, I love Premiere. It's so simple um, to use, so I just use that. So, all right, so you gave me the clothing for this one as well, right, for her getting up? Yeah. So let's put that in there. Did you shot model anything on this? Yes. Okay, so we just have to find the shot. Uh, so there was some things. What what went wrong with this one on the shot model side? Was it like her shoulders? Uh, her forearms, the con the shoulders, the contact point with the body. So like her arms like were going into the body, and then if you have like the forearms going into the rib cage, the clothing gets pulled in, and yeah. it just explodes. The big so. one to notice here is look at the shoulder here. You can see how it's breaking right here. Very ugly. You don't notice it that much when it's playing quickly. But, uh, you know, we don't want to have that. So all of these shot, all of these uh, Olympic files are brought into Mush 3D and they're sculpted frame by frame to basically fix that, bring the deltoid back in, fix the width of the, of the forearm. So, uh, that's what I'm replacing the body with. When you see me go to re-import with new file, I'm bringing in the updated one. So um, yeah, some of the shot modeling is because it's you actually see the problem, and then some of it is just for cloth sim, where yeah. you you'll never see it, but the cloth cannot simulate. Yeah, 
it can't simulate because it's interpenetrating. Um, so yeah. you're trying to tell the clothing, hey, do something physically accurate, uh, but something is like cutting through another thing. So a good example is like, ima imagine you're trying to tell Marvelous to simulate the, the sleeves correctly, physically accurate, but all of a sudden your entire arm goes through your torso. Uh, it's obviously cutting through the torso part of the fabric. So Marvelous designers like, what the hell are you asking me to do? And it can't figure it out. So that stuff has to be fixed. So let's see what it says here. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I am pretty happy with it. And yes, it's in particular because of the style. Uh, so we knew that. And again, that is why we went with that style. Uh, free thumb. Thank you, sir. All right, so you can see here the shoulders should be fixed. You can see they're no longer deforming weird. Now you have the deltoid and the bicep. Good. Let's bring in the fabric. So import. There it is. So we'll do this, and then we're going to jump in and start laying out um, some other shots. So there's our clothing. Just going to drag that in there. Set it to zero. Drag that into my sequencer. When I have it in my sequencer, I convert it to spawnable. That way it only shows in that one sequence, and then I link the animation file to it. Good. This right here. Good. And now you can see she has clothing. So perfect. You see the tassels react to her hands really nicely. So all of that is marvelous. We tried, someone was asking earlier if we tried to do the Sims in, um, or if this was simmed in Unreal. We tried. It's nowhere near uh, ready or to compete with marvelous. There's no way. So one of the things I like, for example, is if you look at her face, you can see that it looks like she's really starting to build up just a subtle little vibrations in her face. Um, all of that is just captured from the motion capture, which is pretty cool. Uh, another thing to notice here, if you're tuning in for the first time, these highlights on the eyes are actually uh, completely art directable. So they are completely fake. So I could turn that on and off and I could change the color and the rotation of it. There's a different map for a uh, different uh, orientation, but that is done to really art direct the eye highlights. It makes such a huge difference and it is an emissive uh, texture just for the little dots, which is really giving it a lot of life. Would that work with uh, a photo reel thing? No. Probably not. <laughs> but for this style, it works. Uh, yeah, there's well. a lot of uh, fun cheats that you can just really get away with. Yeah. So uh, so this is basically what I'm doing now. So as soon as I'm ready to put this into the edit, let's. Uh, I save a lot, which sucks for the streams because, um, like I said, it takes a moment. But, uh, okay, so now I just want to render this out. Right now, I'm not worried about any fancy settings. I just want to pop it into my, uh, my edit. So I'll just come over here. I'm doing it at uh, 2048 by 1556. I'll save this out into K shots. So this is the ceremony. Um, this is my storm off renders. And then I'll just create a new folder. So every new uh, sequence is put in a new folder. That way I'm not overriding uh, my old renders and I'll know for sure like, okay, this has, um, 
the latest version. So we'll just swap out uh, these guys in a second. Okay, so let's come over here. So you can see before, and we'll have the after in a second. Normally I wouldn't render this uh, on a stream, but this sequence is fairly quick since it's uh, pretty tight. So you can see, uh, it's not total real time, but um, rendering 80 frames in um, less than a minute is pretty good. You can see we have our motion blur there, depth of field. You can see all the fabric bits look great. So that's cool. So let's go to our other shot, which is our kneeling shot. This one might take a, a little bit longer. Let's see where this is coming from. So if, if there's an Alembic in there that I don't need, I'll just hide it. Uh, I probably need it for another shot, so I'm not going to get rid of it entirely. Um, okay, so let's render this out and pop it into the sequence. So same thing, I'll just come over here to my render settings. I don't want to render this one again. Let's come over here. And I'll just save this out in to this one is a uh, meal render temp seven so the reason why they're called temp is because my final renders will be exr sequences um, and right now i'm just like just trying to blast through these things fairly quickly so let's kick that out and in the meantime, let's go back over here. So we could go to this guy here. I'm gonna right click. Reveal in project. Right click again. There's a lot of things happening simultaneously. So my computer is gonna be chugging a bit. Replace footage. So uh, ceremony. Storm off, renders, temp three. And I'll just select the new sequence. Sometimes when I do that, it only brings in one frame. Okay, there we go. And now you can see it just replaces it, adjusts all the timing and whatever, so it's perfect. Here she's still nudie, and then this one she's still nudie. Uh, let's go to the <laughs> Neil one. It's what it is. Let's see how that's going. Um, so this one's going to take a moment because I know that this is a big shot. So uh, I might actually even cancel this. So, but what I'll do is I'll show you what we're, we're planning on doing next. So, okay. So let's let's go through the sequence. So she walks up to the priest. The priest is. Uh, doing his priesty thing. And then I need to put the father here wearing his mask as well. They're gonna open up a box and pull out this mask. You can, as you can see, everyone here is wearing these masks. You can see them there. They're, they're, I, I need to put a guy in here, uh, back here somewhere. Uh, if you look over here, you can see all the guys here have the masks. They don't have their loincloths right now. Uh, some of them are also going to have um, different types of uh, clothing, not just like the loincloth. But you can see that they're all there. It's just kind of hard to see because there's so much movement in the camera. But you can see them there. Uh, Want to put a few more guys over here. 
like just starting to peek in, like they're moving in, uh, like wrapping around the stage uh, to witness the ceremony. You can see there's some depth of field issues we need to resolve here, which we'll figure out later. Uh, so the father would come over here, they would open up a box and pull out this mask, and then they would reach over to hand it to her. That's when uh, our other girl gets pissed off. She storms out, Oops. storms out, and she's going to go outside. So the next thing I need to do is we're going to start doing the shots as she goes out. So this is her storming out and walking out. And then we're going to cut to the village. Let me see how this uh, render is doing. So you can see we're almost done. We'll replace this in the shot, and then we'll do uh, more fun stuff. So uh, 20 seconds to go, and then we'll uh, we'll move on. So let me see. Does anybody have any questions in the meantime? For Tran or I? No? All right. So um, it does take a while. So you can see this is almost four minutes to render this. You know, keep things in perspective. Some of the shots on our previous film, The Nino, took 24 hours of frame to render. So the fact that this is 180 frames almost and it's taken four minutes and I'm like outraged is uh, ridiculous, right? So four minutes for 180 frames is, is crazy fast. Um, so there, that's done. So let's pop that in the sequence. So we just come over here to our kneeling, right click, reveal in project, right click, replace footage. We go to our kneel, renders, temp seven. There it is. The clothing is there, let's, let's play it. Missing shots, and she gets pissed off. Okay, so we need to get these missing shots in there. We're not going to get them today, primarily because we need to build the uh, the ma uh, not the mask, the box the mask goes into, and I haven't motion captured um holding the mask so we have to do that um storming off tran should have the clothing for that soon uh so let's let's do the next part so she gets out of here she's going to the exit and she's going out to the village so let's uh get that going So I'm going to go to my maps here, and I'm going to go to Village B. And now we have this here, which is the village. So this is her walking out of um, that hallway, and she's out in this town. So we have a couple shots here what this can look like. So this is probably going to be two shots. So we built this entire, <laughs> this entire village for what's going to be two shots, like everything, all the bridges, all the flags, uh, you know, dozens of tents and huts. And we put a lot of time into this and it's going to be in two shots, maybe three shots. So we'll see, maybe we could do 
more than more than just that. So, all right. So she's going to storm out through here, and she's going to be walking this direction. Okay. So let's minimize this and let's get the animation going for this. So this is like a pretty raw motion capture we're gonna just bring in, which will require cleanup, but at least we could start framing the shots and lighting the shots. So we'll open up Maya. I'm gonna close Premiere for now. So all the motion capture stuff is being done. The cleanup is done in Maya. Um, the motion capture is done with an X-Sense, uh, a window suit. So, all right, so let's get going here. What I might do just to speed this up is I might just save this. Uh, well, let's see. Let's see how it does. It's just going really, really slow. Okay. Well, let's see if it goes a little bit faster. So I'm going to go into my rigs. Okay. So let's find our girl here. And you'll notice that she's got a really weird color coding going on here. That's uh, intentional. That's just, um, it looks weird in here, but that's going to just allow Unreal to know what shaders to put on what. So this is just easy for us to know that everything is working. So I'll go to my reference editor, reference, create reference. And I'll go to my motion capture. So this is like completely a new sequence that I'm doing here. So this is part of session one. Uh, this is COA, so I organized this pretty well. Um, ceremony, it's in the exit. And it's gonna be uh, the last one. Okay. So what you'll see now is a skeleton that if I scroll through, you'll see it's moving around and doing whatever, okay? So this is her walking out of that place. She's pissed off. She sees something. She picks it up. She throws it. Maybe someone yells at her, and she runs off, okay? So let's connect that to the animation. So we just go into our HIK, relink it there. Something, something is up with the head, as you can see. Let's take a look. Yeah, so, uh, all right, so we have to figure out what that is. Uh, Usually what that is, is I just have to open up the file, the original motion capture file. I now just go to the first frame. I don't know why this happens, but it happens. Uh, just relink it to an HIK. File, save. So HIK is just a human IK, and this is how you like retarget all your animation. So we'll open up the rig again and basically do the exact same thing we just did, but it'll, it'll most likely work. The head won't be spinning around all weird. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, so file 
reference editor, file create reference. Uh, there it is. Let's uh, go to frame one. Let's go to frame zero actually here. And let's relink it. And the head is going crazy still. Very weird. <laughs> it's like super exorcist. <laughs> but it's only in the beginning. OK, so let's just try to replace it. Let's go to uh, reference editor. Very weird. Reference. Uh, replace reference. Let's go to version 29. this one works. Don't know why, but that's how it is. Okay. She walks around, she throws something, picks up a rock, throws it, maybe someone yells and she runs off. Okay. That's it right there. So from frame Twenty five, let's say to four twenty. That wasn't intentional either, guys. So so hidden uh, messages there. Okay. So she's there, she's running, she goes to frame four twenty. Great. That's what we want. So we'll go to bake, bake to custom rig. We'll let that bake out. So this was all captured uh, at the Nomen stage. We got uh, a motion capture system just for this. Uh, we captured it on the stage. Our friend uh, Caitlin did all the acting for this. Okay, now we have that. You can see all the keys are now baked. I can go to my reference editor now. Unconnect it, just to speed it up. That way it's not referencing another file. I won't um, delete it though. That way I, if I need to make any changes, I'll, I'll know which version I used. I'm just unlinking it, okay? So you can see the hands are pretty busted. Uh, I think that has to do more with the calibration that we had than the actual mocap suit, but it has been a, a, a pain in the ass, to be totally honest. The, the Manus gloves have not been as perfect as the XN suit. Um, some of it is, some of the rigging has some weird issues. But uh, okay, so I'm not gonna clean any of it up right now. I'll clean that up later. I just wanna grab all of this Alembic and uh, put it into a sequence. So I'll want her walking maybe up to here. I kind of want this entire sequence actually. So what I'll do maybe up to the throw. So I'm gonna do uh Let's just hide all our curves. We'll select this. Since we're doing preliminary lighting, I have no problem keeping the clothing like this. It's going to look ugly, but uh, at least I start seeing some color. So let's go up to like that 250, and I'll just go to cache, 
Alembic cache, export selection to Alembic. If you notice, the face has some animation on it. Uh, it's very funky animation because it's not con it's not for this particular scene. So if I go to my outliner, I'll have my mocap X uh, file here. And I'm just going to select like a long generic one. That isn't doing such crazy expressions. And I could replace that later. Okay. So that's perfect. So let's grab this. Cache, Alembic cache, export selection to Alembic. I'm going to just try to export the whole sequence. It might crash though. So UV right, right face sets, very important. Export selection. It crashes because 450 frames of an Alembic file in uh, Unreal are uh, pretty heavy. So it doesn't like it that much. So let's go to our shots. Let me actually go into, um, my folders here. I'm going to copy this guy, which is just like a, a blank directory that I have. And we'll go into town. We'll paste this. I'm going to paste a few copies of it. Just so you know why I'm pasting copies is this is basically all the shots that I'm going to have in my town sequence. And when you open any of these, they're completely empty of actual files, but they're filled with folder structures. So now I have my Alembic uh, file already, sorry, my Alembic folder already created, cameras, ge geometry exports, Maya cleanups, motion capture files, any shot notes. There's nothing in any of this stuff. But um, this, the file structure is set. So now if I create a new folder, for example, this one that I'm going to call town master, I would just save my Maya file in here. I would save my Alembic files in here. So if I need to find something, it's very simple. If I need to go back to the ceremony, I need to go back to the storm off. You can see my Alembic files exactly where they should be my motion capture files right where they should be, my Maya files exactly where they should be. So by having a, 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 like a preset structure, it's not changing as I go. It's, it's always the same. So it's very easy to jump back into a shot that I did three months ago and know exactly where everything is. Okay, so here, let's go to our town, town master Alembic, and let's call this uh, Poa, Master A. Okay. If it uh, acted weird like that, it usually means that I had something else selected besides geometry. So I'll just hide everything except geometry. There it is. And export this out. It's going to take a moment. Um, She looks like one of those creepy twins from Lovecraft County in that view. Uh, I've never seen Lovecraft uh, County, so I don't know if that's good or bad, but uh, hopefully it's good. I don't um, know about being looking creepy is a good thing. <laughs> I, I don't think he meant it in that way, but, but yeah, so let's just give it a minute and see what happens here. So right now it's uh, writing out uh, an Alembic file with uh, what is this, almost 400 frames. So what is an Alembic file? An Alembic file is basically a sequence of models that blend shape together. Okay, so... Um, 
Um, yeah, so it's basically storing the animation with a sequence of blend shapes. So uh, that way you could send it across multiple different programs and it doesn't care about the rig. It doesn't care about anything that's proprietary. It just bakes it all down into uh, a geometry sequence. The best way I could describe it is uh, it's almost like stop motion at that point where every frame is just a different model and it's just replacing it on every frame so it looks like she's moving. So that's basically it. So the reason why it's heavy is because it is saving 420 of her, of her eyes, 420 hair pieces, 420. Um, Uh, skirts and whatever, so uh, it gets heavy. So once we have this exported out, I'll be able to just grab a, grab this and just pop it into Unreal, and then we could start figuring out how we want to light this um, and what shots we want to do. So this is going to be a, this is going to be probably the shortest sequence in the entire film, even though we probably spent the most amount of time on it, which is the entire town. So um, we, and we tend to do that, spend a lot of time on, we do, right? <laughs> we spend a lot of time on some of the sequences that really don't deserve it, but. Yeah, but uh I guess we wanted to flex a little bit on, on the town and really show this kick-ass uh, society. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was supposed to be like our, our, our main world building piece, but I think the ceremony became like the bigger world building piece. They're both... Uh, Pretty complex, yeah. So it's almost done. So you can see there's a lot of waiting. This is, uh, this is the reality of uh, visual effects. The final product looks really cool and exciting, but it is not uh, a fast paced uh, process. When you watch those shows on TV, um, like mask off or face off or whatever, you know, that's not really how things are done. They're not done in two days. Um, that's just done for, for a TV show. All right, so there we go. So she's exported, so let's go into Unreal. Um, so under Sequences, I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this Town. And in here, I'll create a new folder called master. Actually, let me double check how I did this here. So ceremony, okay, my Alembics, okay. So town, we'll create a new folder. Oh, let's call this Alembic here. And in here, we'll create a folder called um, master wide. And we'll import the Alembic into this. So town, I'm hoping this doesn't crap out. It might crap out and we might have to import it um, in, in chunks. So you can see the file size, 3.6 uh, gigabytes. So pretty heavy. Um, there's our frames. Great. Merge meshes, skeletal. Skip empty frames. 90% rotation. Let's uh, save before we do this because there's a high probability that this could crap out. And let's try it. Okay, so uh, so that's coming in. So we'll grab her, we'll pop her into 
the shots, figure out where our cameras are going to be, figure out um, a rough edit. We'll start spitting the shots out, bringing them into Premiere, and starting to piece together this sequence here. So there's no cloth, same. It's going to be that ugly clothing with all the ugly deformations. We have to look past that. Right now, we're just going to do preliminary lighting, shot composition, and um, rough edit if we have time. So let's give it a moment. This is going to take a second. So if you guys have any questions, now's a good time to ask anything. If not, uh, you get to look at my pretty face for a few minutes. So. So the problem is with, with some of these files is I think once they get past a certain size, they just crash. The thing that really sucks about it, though, is it won't crash right away. It'll crash after like a few minutes. So what I'm hoping doesn't happen is this does what it's doing, and then at the end it just craps out. I'm probably going to be... Uh, a little bit cautious and I'm going to just start exporting this out into sections anyway so right there I'm going to do up to there and that would be a cut so two I'm going to do 250 so I'll just come over here and prepare for the worst so 250 cash alembic cash export selection to alembic so might not need this, but I'm going to prepare for, for needing this. So, Poem Master A. I'm going to do pick up, just picking up the rock. So, I'll let that export. So, that'll only be 225 frames, which uh, should be fine. It craps out once it goes past 300 frames. That's why I'm a little bit worried. Let's uh, go back to our Unreal and see what's going on. So it's, uh, it's, it's processing a lot of stuff, so it's having a hard time. So it's, it's fairly quick. You know, streaming time is, is much slower than real time because things are extra boring when you're watching someone else export something. But in real life, it's really not that bad. You could just go get a coffee or get something to drink, and it'll be done. So let's see if I can open Unreal yet. Still not letting me. So the next step, uh, once I figure out the composition and the lighting, I'll go back to Maya, fix the hands, because you can see that the hands have like this penguiny claw uh, feel to them. So I'll need to get some animation on the hands, figure out what the facial performance is. So I'll put on the motion capture helmet for that and just record it um, on my phone with mocap X and uh, strip out the clothing send that alembic file to tran she will clean up um any uh, broken parts of the animation with uh mush 3d and then she'll do the clothing simulation on top of everything so let's see if unreal lets me do anything it's still not letting me so it'll be done in a second So there she's picking up the rock.
Good thing is a rock is probably so little she doesn't even have, we don't actually have to animate it. And in Unreal, you can see we are still trying to bring in that Alembic file. It's like 400 frames, your mic is turned off. Oh. So I'm hoping it uh, works right now. So the other thing we have to do here is we have to populate this village with people. That's going to be a pain in the butt because we have to have people walking across. We've already done a bunch of extras, so we just have to fill them in. That, that would be done with the exact same process that I just showed you. We would just bring in the rig into Maya, assign a motion capture uh, clip to it, uh, select what frames we want to use, export out a bunch of Alembic files, try to keep it around two, 300 frames. Uh, and you could use the same, uh, same character multiple times in the same shot, setting the frames. Let's say the, the shot is 100 frames and you export it 300 frames of animation you could offset all of them so that they're all moving kind of different, even though it's the same model, and then throw different shaders on it. And then the last uh, thing you could do is throw a different clothing simulation on each of the different characters. So they all look like they're wearing different clothing, they have different body paint, and they're moving differently. That's enough that people won't uh, think it's the same model. coming in. Sorry about the wait, guys, but this is, uh, this is how it is. If anybody has questions, this is a great time to ask. For Village, do you have any issues with light and distance? When I get far away from light, it changes. It looks different with fog. Uh, yeah, that's, that's always a problem for sure. We've had issues with that, um, but it seems to be working right now. So um, I yeah, guess- Well, at a certain point, sometimes the lights just disappear if you get far enough, yeah. so. Yeah, there's probably a, a solution for that. It hasn't, uh, there's definitely a, a solution for that, but we haven't had to uh, resolve that yet. The, you know what, the village, though, has been the one that we've done the most iterations on. I think even more than the, in terms of lighting. That in the first. The first set. Yeah. All right, so there you go. She's in there. Uh, she doesn't have any shaders assigned to her at the moment. I don't know why they didn't come in. I have a suspicion as to why, but uh, whatever. Uh, I'll rotate her into Position, so she'll be something like that. So rotate her 90 degrees here. And it's okay. If she doesn't have shaders, we'll fix all that stuff. So I'm going to grab her, throw her into my sequencer, go to my first frame animation, link the animation. And now when I move the timeline, there she is. She's walking around, looking all bummed out. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna do a, a split layout. I'm gonna turn off. Um, that scene is pretty heavy too. Yeah. This is definitely a sequence where I wish the floor was as flat as possible because this might really uh, be a pain in the butt. So let's come in here, just kind of line it up with the floor.
So you can see we're definitely having some issues with the feet cutting through that ground. Um, so we'll, we'll have to fix that. Okay, so let's uh, find a good position for her. Okay. I'm going to turn on my uh, letterbox so we can get a better view of what this is going to look like in the shot. Something more like that. Okay, I'm going to offset the animation here. Because maybe what I want to do, like right there, I want her to be like over here somewhere. So I wanted her to pick up a rock and just kind of throw it at something. The whole thing is she sucks at throwing. She picks up something and she throws it and uh, she totally misses and someone screams at her. So. Let's uh, bring this in like that. Okay. So this is where it's going to have to start, and then I'm going to have to cut in order for her to end up in that other spot. So let's get this going. So the shaders didn't uh, copy over. Probably, I know why, because um, I need to make sure that I don't have any sort of namespace issues. And this one has a namespace problem. So Unreal wasn't able to detect it. It's not a big deal. I just have to reassign the shaders in here. Uh, and I'll just make sure that I, because I could just re-import it. But you saw how long that took. It'll bore everyone to death, including myself. So I'm just going to save this. Uh, because that took so long, I don't want it to crash out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just going to relink the shaders on here, and then we're going to just start lighting her. So we'll have to fix the, the feet contact later. Right now, I don't care about any of that. I just care about uh, the shot. I could cheat and put like a couple of. Uh, pieces of grass strategically placed to kind of hide that. I might do that. Okay. So now here I could just go to isolate and that just shows me what each piece is. I could just come over here to my content folder, assets, characters, Koa is the name of the character, materials. And all I'm going to do here is just uh, start popping in the correct material. So this is just the eyes. So you can see all the eye variations that I have. So that's left eye, that is my right eye. Make sure I have the one with the right highlight, there it is. It's not gonna matter because she's gonna have her back to us, but uh, that's okay. I just wanna try to do it as clean as possible. 
So the hair, drag that in there. Next up is the body, and that's really the main one that I need to start lighting. After that, I have, let's just throw the shoes in there. And then we have the mouth. You're not gonna see much of that here, but uh, we'll just do it anyway. And then the rest should be the jewelry. She has a lot of. Okay. There you go. All right. So let's start lighting her. So. The problem with this shot to me is, as, as nice as it is, it really is more about the village than about her. And I, and I guess that's not a, that's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, I, I wish she was a little bit closer to us. And maybe we can do that. Maybe the, the answer is to grab this, rotate her more like this. Ragger. This way. Let's set this to be um, object. Like that. And the closer she is to us, one of the things that we might save ourselves is having to deal with the feet on this wide shot. So we could do something like this. Boom, she comes into the shot. And then we only have feet right. We actually don't even have feet. So we could have the feet like right around there. So that's kind of cool. So let's uh, get some lighting on her. All right. So we'll go to our lights, spotlights. And the rule for lighting for me is always light from the back to the front, meaning the lights should always be coming from the back towards the camera, never the other way around, unless you're trying to make it look uh, a certain way, like a flashlight effect. Okay, so we have something like that. Let's zoom in there. I'll rotate her. Position. Bring this down a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is not make her completely visible, but make her read clearly, right? It's a clarity, not necessarily over lighting her. You can see that we can see the shape of the light here because of the fog here. So if I go into my light here and I go to volume, I have my volumetric contribution. If I set that to zero, you can see that now that light looks like it disappeared even though it's still affecting the side here. I'll set that color to like an orangey color all right, so let's take a look. So you can see her silhouette 
It's now easier to read because it's defined. Uh, uh, clear, not bright. Wait, that's not that's not what I want. More like clarity over 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 brightness. I don't want everything to be very bright and ugly. So this is a problem here because as she's getting closer to the fire, which should be the thing that is causing the the illumination, it's it's starting to dim. I need to make sure that the rotation of the light works uh, on every frame. So I'll play around with my um, attenuation radius. Something like that. in position so the last frame is my shot it would be like that all right so that's cool let's duplicate it come over here rotate this so this is coming from our other light on the other side Obviously, we're going for more theatrical lighting than realism. So I could get away with a lot. And since it's much further away, I'll dim it. that. Let's take a look. Okay. Uh, let's grab that same light, duplicate it again, rotate it down. And we'll, we'll adjust uh, these settings. Uh, you can see we're having these little X's here. It means that we have uh, overlapping lights. So we have to optimize that stuff, which we, we will in a minute. So this light is going to be coming directly from above. I'll bring it up a little bit like so, bring up the attenuation radius, and we'll make this blue. Let me turn that on and off. Let's take a look. So we have a little bit of theatrical moonlighting. She approaches the fire. We start seeing the rim lighting. OK, so I'll take that. Let's grab those three lights. I'm going to set them to uh, movable for now. Drag them into my sequencer. And I'll set them to spawnable. So these lights will now only be in this one shot. OK, so they're not going to be uh, repeating over and over and over. Because the next shot, I might not not need those lights. She might, she's going to be in a different spot. I need to um, completely change it. So, okay. So we have that. So she comes into frame. Cool. So let's start plotting our next shot here. So I'm going to create another camera. Uh, give me one second. Let me see what my settings were for the previous camera. 
Okay, so that was 1.3 um, aperture. So I'll just copy that. This is the new camera I just created. So I'll set the aperture to the same thing, 1.3. And let's find our shot. Okay, the other thing is we need to figure out our 180. So our 180 meaning, picture your scene from above, like this. Right, and you can see she's walking in this direction. And let's just pull this up real quick, okay? So you can see she's right here. So the 180 rule means pick one, put a line across where your character is walking or talking or whatever. And now put like a half a circle right here. Your camera can be anywhere as long as it stays Sorry, my mouse is a little weird. On this side of this half circle. So the camera can be here looking out like this. The camera can be here looking like that. All around, all around, looking this way, 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 looking this way this way looking this way but it cannot cross this line meaning the camera should not be over here or over here or over here okay the reason why is once you put the camera on that side she will look like she's going the wrong direction and the audience will lose orientation this goes back to like old, old Hollywood, which was a very simple concept that the, uh, the village was, whenever the, the cowboys went to the right, they were going to the village. Whenever they were coming to the left, they were going to the town or, or to, their, from, to their house, to the, to, the, to the town, I mean. So one was going to the town, the other one was going back home. And as long as you went in each direction, everyone understood, oh, they're going that way. Oh, they must be going to the town. Oh, they're going this way. They must be going home. Silly as it is, that is 100 years of cinematic language, and we still need that to know where we are in our shots. So that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to be sure that we're going to find a nice angle here, but we want to make sure that we maintain the right side of the 180. So we're going to find a nice angle here. I don't want my angle, like my, my, my natural thing is, oh, let's just put the camera like over here. Because it always looks nice and just walk like over the shoulder. And I might do that for the previous shot. But the problem is it's too similar of an angle. So it'll appear like a jump cut. So I'm not going to do that. So what I'll do is let me actually look at some of the cameras that I've already created. just to see if any of these uh, can be used. Like this is a really nice uh, shot right here. So maybe I should use this one. So let's grab her. This is a top view. This one's really nice also. This one's really nice. But the problem is you can see the 180. The 180. Yeah. Well, we found, well, you framed that shot first and then realized there was 180. So we did this one. Yeah. So it moved a bunch of stuff around to get that angle. Yeah. 
still kind of like it like that. <laughs> this one here, right? Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah, it's still the better shot. Uh, tried. Uh, but this one is really nice. So let's. Um, I like the little rock in the side there. So we have a transform here. So let's grab her. Okay. So this is a different shot. So what I'm going to do, I'll just save this. I'm going to come over here to my sequences. to copy that into there. I'm going to duplicate this. And let's do side B. I'll save all. Okay, so now we go to this camera angle here. So this is now considered a separate shot. So since it's a separate shot, I could grab her. We could find her there. Move her in position. Bring her down just a smidge. I'm going to put her in our sequencer and set the timeline. Now, since this is the next shot, I'm going to offset the timing. So it looks like it's further along. Okay, let's take a look over here. You can see she's just completely gone. Like You just do not see her at all. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I think these wide shots are, are pretty cool, but uh, not at the expense of the character. So let's find her. Maybe so she's all the way over there. Okay, so that's my uh, current camera. I'm going to go wider. Let's move her over here. So we're literally moving her on a shot by shot basis, it's not going to make continuity sense, but it doesn't matter. It, as long as it feels like it's uh, continuous, it'll, that's all that really matters. So, th something like this is a little more interesting. It's having a hard time because this is um, a very heavy scene. I'm just not finding like the angle that kills me. Uh, kind of like that right there. So let's start shifting this over here.
So that's a nice shot right there. Like that a lot. So might be too far though from where she is. So okay. That's pretty nice right there. So what we could do, let's frame that. Okay, I like that. I'll save that position. Let's grab her. Okay, so we have something like this. Let's um, save that position. Oh, she's uh, she's key as well. So I need to. Uh, yeah. I need to put her in the right position. So let's go to split here. So I'm going to go with something like that. Delete this here. Push in. Save the position here. Save a position here. You can see she's super dark. So let's light her. So spotlight again. Same thing. We light her from the back. In the back meaning but to whatever is not facing the camera, not literally her back. So let's come over here. Put this over here. Okay, so you can see that looks weird. I know. Um, now we can cheat a little bit because we could put something and suggest that there's a fire off to the side. So first let's put that light in there. So now you can see you can read her shape much better. Let's go to our volumetric, set that to zero. Okay, great. Now we could understand her shape there. We could grab another light. Don't want to over light her. Now you can see we're starting, we need to define this edge here. What I might do 
is I might go to volume metrics on this and I might bring this up. Uh, so let's do like 40. I'm basically using this light to paint fog. So I'll place this over here. And what I want is her silhouette to read clearly against this backdrop without lighting her. Without over lighting her, I should say. It's starting to read much better. Now you can see her silhouette reads uh, a million times better. Let's turn on volumetric shadows. Don't know if we're gonna need them though. Um, I'm going to go into my light here. I'm gonna go into my light function. I'll show you this here. So I go to light functions. And I'm gonna do flicker. Toss that in there. And that should give me some flicker on that side. Okay. Again, I just don't want her to read that clearly. So let's look at this other light here that we had, this guy here. I want this to flicker also. So let's put a flicker on that as well. This is our dramatic light function. So you can see that flicker on her rim light much better, she's reading much clearer, but she's still silhouetted, which is what I want. Now the next thing I want to do, let's make sure we have our letterbox on so we can get an idea of the framing. I'll darken up the framing here. Okay, and let's play with our focus distance. So it's always about her, never about the environment. And this is one of the problems that we're dealing with with, this, uh, with these particles, is you can see that the particles are not going out of focus, but the environment, but she is. So you can see, even if I go completely out of focus, the fire stays in focus. That sucks. Yeah, those are all kinds of problems. Um, it doesn't work in reflections either. Yeah, so I have to figure <laughs> out a solution for that. There's all kinds of things. Yeah, because really the only solution at the moment, I guess, is to keep her out of focus and have the environment be in focus. But that, ooh, that's not good. So um, I have to figure something out for that. So let's see how that looks. And that's just a limitation of Unreal. What is this here? It's like a black spot there that I'm not digging. Oh, look what Alex said. What did uh, render after depth of field is a setting on the material. Okay, for the okay, so I'll take a look at that. Cool. So. Uh, Thanks, Alex. Thank you, sir. So. <laughs> so uh, all right, so. Next week, we'll continue this. So let's just take a look at where we're at. Um, we'll wrap this up. So let me just open up Premiere.
and it'll now make a little bit more sense where we're at. So let's minimize this. Okay, so that sequence that we're working on is what happens after this. shots that are missing and I just finished that one That's not up. so she'll storm out and then we go to the stuff that we did today which will be the town so boom out she goes um, she'll have clothing have clothing there as well and maybe uh, we'll put a, uh, a couple of, of guys in there one of the big the big things that this sequence is missing which this shot has which I really like is the sense of a crowd there is a lot of guys there but you're definitely not feeling them yet so you can see they're there but they're they're dark skin so you're not seeing them that clearly so we may have to play with some of the the loin uh, cloth colors and uh, just different outfits to make them pop up. Another idea I've thought of is making them paint their entire body a certain color, which you, do, you see on some ceremonies, where they'll all be painted orange or white or whatever, just to have them really stand out. So we might have to do that. I may want to put some of the guys here. We have tried that before, and they looked really crappy, very contrived. So maybe try to put some sort of a stand here and having some of them like uh, kind of crouched around, but they didn't look good when they were standing there. Uh, Want to put some more detail over here. Um, these guys are missing their masks. So everybody here should have a mask on except for her who's about to get the mask. And then the, this one here who gets pissed off because she's not getting a mask anytime soon. She's not part of the tribe's hunters. So that's why she storms off. So anyway, we'll continue that next week. We'll keep working on, uh, we'll hopefully have the elements for that other shot and then we'll uh, be able to uh, keep working on um, these shots here. So yeah, we'll have to figure out the depth of field thing that Alex uh, just mentioned. So boom, that'll be, uh, that's huge. So that's awesome. So yeah, so does anybody have any questions before we go? So let's see some of the questions here. Uh, can you see chat? Uh, I do see the chat, but I don't look at it while I'm working. Uh, do I use Blender? No, but I would love to know Blender. For Village, do you have any issues with light and distance? With that? We already talked about that one. Uh, so, Yozi, so sorry about that. And then that's it. Uh, Vinit just said, oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, yeah. So, I guess that's it. So, next week, we'll continue. Uh, so, let's see this uh, depth of field thing. Probably. Let's see, render. Yeah, I have to find it, but uh, I'm going to assume it's in here somewhere. 
we'll, we'll figure it out. I'll figure it out and I'll show you guys next week because this is a, a good thing. So, um, Yeah, so I'll take a look at this next week and um, I'll show you guys how we did it. But uh, yeah, but thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys next week. And hopefully we can wrap this guy up soon. So yes. Yeah. If you guys want to follow uh, us, you can always follow us on Instagram. Uh, Trent and I both teach at Noman. So you can look at us there and take our classes. And um, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys around.